are, you know, there are certain funky things about it, and as you'll see, like, you have to do lots of calculations in your head and things like that. But the game itself, if it's played, you know, if you just get into it, it's actually a really good game. The, the principles behind it, and the sort of serious side of it, is that for those of you who know about situationism, in one of the early editions of this international situation, is they talk about situationist gaming, which is going to be like Johan Dusinger in the magic circle, and it will be like a little cooperative space. It's like uh, the caucus race in Alice, where everybody gets prizes. What's interesting about this is it's not like that at all. This is not a, you know, it's not a happening in that sense. What it is, it's training. So he called it Kriegsspiel after the original Prussian game, which was that he used to train rockets. Interesting, he misspelled it in the same way as H.G. Wells. I'm not sure whether that's a Freudian slip or not. Um, but he would have believed in psychoanalysis, so maybe he didn't. Um, so what this is, is a training exercise in the principle embodied in Clausewitz's, Carl von Clausewitz's great book on war. So it's got things like, you know, the defence is stronger than the attack, flanking is a good idea, citing your enemy, and so on and so forth. Um, so I think that the best way to learn to play the game is to play the game, actually. Um, there are some combat tables here. As you can see, you can see they're being well used by people because they... Um, for those at the back, I mean, it might be good if everybody split up and me and Stefan will stand at the back of you and then you divide you into two teams. Sit them at the back of you. What? Well, yeah, I'll sit them at the back. But you can... So if you could just move across the bit so you can get round the table. Obviously those who want to play the game can get closer in because they're going to have to And I could then also show that we can take these down. I'll take those with you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, so what we do is like to take it back to sort of our nerdy wargaming teenage you and actually base it on real campaigns. So what this is based on, uh, there's a map somewhere here. Is, so this is, uh, we, we've been playing a scenario based on the 1800 Marengo campaign. For those who haven't seen my flyer, this is the Tormor of Guy de Bourg, uh, uh, it's called Guy de Bourg Stardew. This friend of mine, Kamavi Donker, did this painting, and this is the Tormor, obviously, of Bonaparte crossing the Alps. So we've been playing some Rango scenario, but for this one, as a final one of the book, we thought we'd try 1813. This is the Battle of Leipzig, which is the, the, the great moment when basically the whole of Europe rose up against Bonaparte as the dictator. I mean, what's interesting in this combat is that this side, which I'll do, uh, this is the French here, this is the French here, is Hegel, and this side, who are the six, the, the, the six coalition, are Klaus. It's interesting, they were on opposite sides. People tend to forget that Hegel is a Bonaparte. An interesting part if you think about his theories, but we can not talk about that maybe as the game progresses. Okay, so this is the Emperor here. So who's going to be the Emperor? You're going to be the Emperor. You, can, you want to be on the German side or you want to be uh, oh, you're a Rhinelander? I was in Cologne recently, they said we fought for Bonaparte. <laughs> <laughs> their comment. So, okay, so we what, what this is, so what we did is, these are various tests. So, for instance, this is Berlin, this is Leipzig, this is Stettin, uh, that was Dresden, this is Hamburg, this is Würzburg, so this is, this is the west, this is actually west in the heart of Germany. Uh, this side is Königsberg, now called Kaliningrad, uh, Warsaw, and so on and so forth. Alright, so they're very, we, we, this cracks crack out. So we just took various part of the map of just a, a randomly assigned the names because we thought it would be quite amusing. Okay, so what I want to do, what you you notice is uh, that there are nine infantry pieces, four cavalry pieces, and two of these artillery pieces. So there's uh, 15 pieces. There are also these commander pieces, one foot general and one mounted general. Now you move five out of your pieces of your army every move and make one attack. So basically you're moving a third of your army. Uh, the, thing, the key thing is, as I said, is these arsenals. So you can, your troops, if they're not connected with an arsenal, either horizontally yeah, or orthogonally, I think diagonally and orthogonally, I think is the technical term. Yeah? So in a straight line or a diagonal, to translate, they don't, they can't fight and they can't move. They're basically <coughs> dead and can be reconnected. These are like the main transmitters and what these generals are are like sub-transmitters. So for instance, if my general was there, um, and that piece was there, it would actually then be in communication because it goes, all the signal goes up there and then it goes all the way there. Right? But if it then moves to there, it's dead, effectively, until you put it back into the supply. Yeah? Right, and so one of the things to do, obviously, is to hit, is to, rather than try and kill all these, is to move into their supply routes and cut them off. Right, that's the way, that's the way to do the game, actually. Um, right, what else am I thinking to say? So, um, okay, so the best thing to, the, the other main thing to realise is to say, you, you group them together, so a piece here, for instance, is defended by pieces in its range. So, for instance, that piece there would be defended by that piece, that piece, and that piece, but not that piece, because it's not connected on the side at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, if you line cavalry pieces up in a line, they get a shock about them, so they go up to seven, and if you get to get four in the line, they're 28, and you can just power the edge. So that's the power of the shock power of those The main way to win the game is to intimidate psychologically all the time. I probably don't have faith in it because he's been in the he is the expert in it the people that are losing the game even when he is losing the game. Um, okay, I think the best way actually to play is to start with that, shall we? Um, Stefan, do you want to mentor one side and I mentor the other or? Sure. Yeah? Are you, are you being the emperor or are you being the ally? Um, you don't have to, you can be both, well, both two emperors actually, or three emperors actually, you can be the Austrian emperor. Okay. You can be the Austrian emperor, you can be Barclay, the Tolly, or Bonaparte. Oh, the latter. Yeah, the latter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
Okay, so that's that side. Yeah? Um, Malcolm, are you going to come and play? No, I'm just going to sit here and recover from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> a bit bore, Miss. <laughs> uh, does anybody else want to play? No. Good. You want to move over here, James? You want to become, are you Bonaparte or... <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we'll be with me. I'm, I'm an umpire. I'm merely advising. Okay. We'll do <laughs> I mean, that's a bit like the CIA. They've got these advisors that went to different states. Ah, that's it. Go ahead, go ahead, you know. Oh, well, my father was in Congress and Cultural Freedom, so now you have discovered. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, but you know some very dubious people like Warren Goss. Okay. Um, I can't think, who, who, who should begin? Let's flip a coin. Let's flip a coin, that's always the best way, isn't it? Who's going to call? Who's going to call from here? Is it the bonus office? Are you going to call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much is the bank? It's heads. You've got it. Right, okay, so I've got five pieces that you can move. You've got the pieces in the supply. As you'll see, this one goes up to here, and then hits that come up with this. Oh, if they're, all, if they're touching something in supply, they stay in supply. Right, so that line there, even if there wasn't a command of it, all of those are in supply because they're touching something. And that includes diagonal. Right? Okay. And this is... Here and here is what your objectives are. So 
one of the things you want to do is try and break them or take it. And they, you obviously have the advantage to them, far away, because, and they're quite difficult to take because you've got infantry pieces on them. Yeah? Now, it comes a collective decision to bow the party. And it also protects our sideline. Because if we, my original thought was to attack four there, yeah. well, then that gives them the opportunity to come up there and cut our supply line. Okay. Yeah. So by moving into that space there and then in that direction, means we don't need no danger of either losing connection with us. Yes, yes, we'll be the person to the next guy. Yeah, this side, this side. 
have a cut the father by this really good idea there. Yeah. Right. He's made those tools in general, but good deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you know the Russian history. Yeah. Good. <laughs> also, I, 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 this is the funny thing about this, uh, about this, doing this project. He's like, I mean, we read all this military history out of the next year. It all comes back to so. uh, You have five minutes. You will probably want to reunite your army. Yeah. Or move forward. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 no. We're giving the misleading advice. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Has everybody got one of these before leaflets? Have you all got leaflets? This is for our last one, which is actually more about the game we're playing on Wednesday. Just give it, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get it out. Of the 